I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 6, and let's focus on verses 15 and 16. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul, in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about it and the surrounding nations became afraid, our enemies' self-esteem fell severely because they realized that this work had been accomplished by God. Have you ever been bullied? Some people, because of their size, their expertise, or their influence, feel the need to intimidate and harass or to threaten others. And the core of every bully's heart is just insecurity. It's low self-esteem. And if they have considerable power, then bullies are afraid of losing it. So they feel compelled to prove their dominance over and over. Some bullies are pathologically mean and dangerous, and they continue bullying long after they're locked away in prison with other bullies. But most bullies will cower when they're confronted. Because the core motivation for bullying is not a stance of conviction. It's all rooted in fear. You know, I'm not tall. I don't know if you've ever met me before, but I'm not tall. So when I was younger, I was even smaller. And I was just, I was an easy target for bullies. At least that's what they thought. You know, some big guy, insecure despite his size, wants to broadcast his dominance to everyone. So he looks for the smallest guy to harass. Notice bullies never find a guy bigger than them. And what these bullies didn't know was that I had a big brother. four years older than me. He played football. And so the two of us were always fighting. I might have looked like an easy win, but well, let's just say in a fight or flight situation, I've never been a flight guy. And I may have been the target of several bullies, but only once. You see, I knew how to fight and I wasn't afraid to. And it's amazing how much blood that a well-placed punch to the nose can produce not trying to gross you out. I'm just trying to say bullies have to learn the hard way that you are not an easy win. Has Satan learned that about you or is he still bullying you? Nehemiah and the struggling Jewish community faced a collection of bullies. And these bullies mocked Israel and they puffed up their feathers like a peacock. But all their threats were nothing more than hot air. And they were trying to intimidate Israel against being faithful and following the Lord because history had proven that when Israel believed God and they put their faith into action, they were unstoppable. And at that point, the bully's power through intimidation comes to an end. And once the walls of Jerusalem were completed, the bully's true colors came out. They became afraid and then their self-esteem fell severely, as the Bible says. Israel had won a great victory by submitting to God in the midst of great opposition. And again, it is God who provides great victory. Even their enemies knew that it was the Lord who had rebuilt that wall. But he doesn't give the victory until his people will surrender their will to his plan. This is the process of restoration. God makes a promise. Man chooses to believe the promise, which leads to man's faithful action. And then God is faithful to his word and fulfills the thing that was promised. And that process is how God leads his people back to himself. It's how he guides them step by step, day by day, to a right relationship with Him. It's not just a thing that happened in the Old Testament, it's how it happens today. And this should give you hope. If you notice, uh, God has been reversing the steps uh, of the people of Israel. That is, Nehemiah's leadership has helped reverse the steps of his people as they travel back home. Right? The last time we saw his people with Jerusalem, they were walking away. The first thing they had to do in order to return to the Lord was to walk back. Back up the same path that their parents' generation had traveled downward as they departed from God. And yes, there were victories for the faithful in Jerusalem. But that did not mean that the enemy would give up trying to bully them and and trying to undermine Israel's total restoration to the Lord. The enemy never quits, right? It just momentarily retreats in order to change its tactics. It's kind of like what we see in the Middle East with those who attack Israel. Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. 
During the same period of time, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to、uh, Tobiah, and Tobiah kept sending them replies. For there were many in Judah who had sworn allegiance to him, because he was the son in law of Shechaniah, the son of Arach, and his son j e h o c h a n a n a n had taken his wife, the daughter,、uh, taken as his wife, the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Bechariah. And they would even praise his good deeds in my presence. And they passed on my words to him. And Tobiah kept sending him letters to intimidate me. You see, if bullying does not prove effective, well, then perhaps politics or intermarriage will. So they tried to intermarry with the nobles of Jerusalem, these enemies. Or they want to do something else. It doesn't matter. The, nev- the enemy never stops trying to stop you. So keep seeking the Lord through his word, day by day, chapter by chapter. And let him fortify the walls of faith around you so that you can be a fortification for others. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today? Because we need your monthly support now more than ever. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. You know, another way that you can help Groundworks Ministries is to tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with your friends and family and, and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website. Groundworksministries.com. 